Hi there, my name is Kendrick and welcome to Travel and Live Free. In this video, I'm going to talk about my game plan to visit every single country in Asia in my quest to visit every single country in the world and that video is going to come up right now. There are several countries in Asia that I have not yet visited and in this video, my game plan is going to be divided into three different sections based on the regions of Asia that I will visit. The first region is Central Asia, the second region is South Asia, and the last region is East Asia. So for Central Asia, it's gonna be a lot of stand countries, and the countries that I have not visited there yet is Armenia, Azerbaijan, Georgia, Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, Tajikistan, Turkmenistan, and Uzbekistan. I'll most likely use my airplane points to travel to this region of the world, I have not yet calculated how much airplane points I need because originally I was gonna go book my airplane points to go here in the old program, which was gonna cost about 150,000 airplane points in business class. However, obviously that has changed and it's probably closer to 200,000 airplane points now. The good news is a lot of these Central Asian countries are right beside each other and for a big part of it, such as Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, and Tajikistan, I will do a road trip there to see the Pamir Highway, which is near the top of my bucket list of must-see destinations. Now, for Azerbaijan and Armenia, those two countries, they don't like each other. So I heard that if you have an Armenian stamp and you go to Azerbaijan, you can get in trouble. So it's best to go to Azerbaijan first and then go to Armenia second. Turkmenistan apparently is a very secretive country and getting in is quite difficult. So for that one, you do have to get a guide in order to be eligible to enter this country. Uzbekistan and Georgia are pretty straightforward. I can just fly into those countries. I heard that crossing the border to Uzbekistan is not one of the best decisions because there's a lot of corruption in the border. So I heard that it's best to fly to Uzbekistan to go visit that country. The next region is South Asia. And countries in South Asia that I have not yet visited are Bangladesh, Maldives, Pakistan, and Sri Lanka. Bangladesh is a country that I just wanna take off when I visit it. I have no desire to see it thoroughly. For the Maldives, it's in my bucket list to see those over the water bungalow. And for that, I am saving up those Hilton points to go stay at the over the water bungalow. It does require a lot of points and I'm guessing it's gonna cost at least 100,000 Hilton points per night. Now don't quote me on that because I'm still in the process of researching it. And ideally, you should get the diamond status with Hilton honors. That means you have to get the top tier Amex Hilton card to get that automatic diamond status with Hilton to get yourself to stay at the over the water bungalow as a room upgrade. Pakistan, thankfully, is easier to visit now because you can just get an e-visa to enter this country. Before it was much more difficult, but now they've totally opened tourism. And Sri Lanka sounds like a cool country to visit. It's definitely one of the places in South Asia that I'm interested in seeing. And I think for that, I plan on going to Sri Lanka because it's easy to go to Maldives right after because they're right beside each other and there are flights that go between those two countries. As you can guess, I will be using my airplane points to go to these South Asian countries. One of the best routes is actually to fly from the east coast of Canada, stopping over in Europe and ending in the Maldives because that is one of the sweet spots in the new airplane program. Now, the last region in this list is East Asia and the countries that I have not yet visited in East Asia are Bhutan, Japan, Mongolia, Nepal, and North Korea. Now, North Korea is definitely the sketchiest place to visit on this list. And for that, you do need to join a tour that goes from Beijing to North Korea. And from what I heard, it costs over $600 US for this tour. So that is something that I have to look into once the pandemic has ended. Bhutan is a country where you do have to pay per day and it's $250 US per day. So it's not a cheap travel destination. But with that being said, you can just go there for a day. I can see the Tiger Monastery, which is high up in my bucket list and then leave. Nepal is also high up in my bucket list. And I want to do that sooner rather than later because I want to do the entrepreneur circuit. And the younger I am, the easier it is for me to do it. I can see that if I'm older, I start doing these tracks and I get hurt, then the chances of me recovering is much lesser. So there are things in life where you do have to travel there when you're younger, when you can take a beating as opposed to doing it when you're older. Japan and Mongolia are relatively easy to visit. I can easily visit Japan from Vancouver, Canada. There's a lot of flights here using the airplane points as well as Alaska Airlines and other frequent flyer program. So I'm not in a rush to visit Japan just because it's so easy and accessible to visit it from Vancouver, Canada. So that sums up my game plan on which countries I want to prioritize to visit when I go visit every single country in Asia. And as you can tell, I am going to be using Aeroplan to book most of my flights here in this region of the world because Aeroplan is very accessible and it's a sweet spot actually if you live in the west coast of Canada. I wouldn't be opposed to using some of my Alaska Airline points. However, I am saving that up for the Oceania part of my trip. Anyways, that's about it for this video. Don't forget to like, subscribe, leave your comments below. And don't forget to sign up to our Travel and Live Free newsletter where you can get a 10-step cheat sheet on how to travel around the world. 
You'll also get the latest tips and strategies on how to save money on travel for Canadians, how to go on around the world adventure travel for Canadians, and how to use travel to get more freedom in your life as a Canadian. You can sign up for the newsletter in the description below. Until next time, I'll see you then.